Welcome to day 26, how to develop performance indicators to maximize results. The retail saw blueprint to teach you everything you need to know to confidently grow and scale your brand. Build a connected community of loyal evangelists and multiply your brand's impact, sales, and profits. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Dan Lohman. I've had the privilege of mentoring and working with hundreds of brands from pre-revenue to multi-billion dollars in sales. This is a culmination of the best strategies that are working today. I spent years testing and perfecting them to save you valuable time and money to give you the edge that you deserve. If you haven't done so yet, download the free 30-day guide to prosperity workbook at retailsolve.com 30-day workbook to help you get the most out of this brand building series. Go back and listen to all the episodes in this masterclass so that you don't miss a thing. The strategies build upon each other in the order of the series. Please share these and help me raise the bar natural. I want to take a moment to recap the last episode, how to ensure flawless execution using scorecards. In that episode, we talked about how scorecards are the best strategy, the best tool to manage projects, and how they're also the most underutilized tools in this industry. They're the best tools because they're the tools that break projects down into bite-sized chunks. They identify who's responsible for what, and then they hold those people accountable. With a scorecard, you can identify what needs to be done, when it's due, who's responsible for it, and then you can check those things off. And the best part about a scorecard is that you can measure the results and measure the effectiveness. You can actually take a scorecard that you produced from last year from a promotion or something like that and compare it to against what you're going to do this year so that you can use a scorecard to get a jump start not only on the promotion but to see how much better you did. So in other words, you could use a scorecard to improve your results. Scorecards work great, but KPIs are what make them work even better. So that ties in nicely to today's topic, how to develop performance indicators to maximize results. Key performance indicators, or KPIs, are the guardrails that keep everything on track. Throughout this entire series, we've been talking about the importance of retail execution and how you can gain a tremendous advantage just by simply performing better at retail than other brands. This episode gives you the tactics and the strategies to do exactly that. Interested? Most brands can point to a super salesperson that has a huge win at one retailer. While impressive, those are typically the exception and not the norm. This is your opportunity to differentiate yourself and stand apart from the crowd. This is where you begin to reap the reward from following the tactics and the strategies we've been covering here in the 30 Day to Prosperity Challenge on my podcast, in the free weekly webinars, and throughout all my content. Remember that this is also where you build momentum, and your wins begin to stack and amplify your results. But none of this is possible if you do not execute flawlessly at retail. This is where key performance indicators, or KPIs, play an important role in your success. Consider this. You launch a new item, and you tell all your internal and external sales teams, including your broker, to get it on the shelf, and they do that. You sit back expecting a huge bump in sales only to find that it's failing in several stores and customers are complaining because they can't find it where they're shopping. Sound familiar? I see this all the time. Remember that it takes a lot of time to correct a merchandising problem like this and that you've already alienated or upset a lot of potential customers. It's unlikely that you're going to be able to recoup the lost sales as a result. I share a real life story about exactly this on podcast episode 104. So what happened was a friend of a brand owner went into a store to support her friend and wanted to buy that brand in that store. Well, she went into the store and she couldn't find it anywhere. After about 20 minutes of looking, including having the store personnel help her, they finally found the brand. It was mismerchandised. Well, the problem was because it was mismerchandised, people weren't able to find it. Well, here's the challenge. Here's the problem. The agency that got the brand in distribution got it in distribution, checked the box. So in other words, they did what they were paid to do. But it was a colossal failure because the brand was spending a lot of money to try to drive traffic into the retailer. So they were alienating or upsetting a lot of their customers. That's not good. In addition to that, because it was mismerchandised in the wrong place, now it's got to be re-merchandised. Well, that's not going to happen overnight. That's going to probably take a month or two to get the product re-merchandised properly where it should have been merchandised all along. In addition to that, they've lost a lot of sales, a lot of opportunities to make that first impression. I hear stories like this all the time. A lot of brands fail as a result of this. 
This is why you need to have flawless execution at retail, especially when you're launching a new brand. Go back and listen to Secrets 104 so you can hear the story, the rest of the story, and how it worked out for the brand. A robust set of KPIs would have helped you avoid this catastrophe in the first place. You should have KPIs for everything it's customer facing at a minimum. For example, one, distribution KPI. You might want to set a 30% ACV for tier three retailers, a 70% ACV for tier two retailers, and a 100% ACV for tier one retailers. Two, merchandising guidelines. You want the item to be merchandised at the right of brand X at eye level. Three, pricing guidelines. The item is to be priced 10% below brand X. Four, promotion guidelines. The item is to be promoted four times a year with a 20% TBR, etc. I've included several examples of KPIs in the video version of this episode that you'll want to check out on the 30 Day to Prosperity Challenge page. You can view it at RetailSolve.com 30 Day Challenge. Scroll down to day 26. KPIs make it easy for retailers and customer facing sales teams to execute on your behalf and they can ensure that shoppers can easily find and buy your products wherever they shop. They also make it easier for retailers. You don't want to burden them. Anything that you can do to help drive sales by leveraging the strength of your brand is a win-win for both you and the retailer, and it's something that most of your competitors overlook. If you want to dig deeper into KPIs and how to effectively use them, there's a dedicated module in my Effective Broker Management course. You can learn more about it at RetailSolve.com Effective Broker Management. For additional inspiration, listen to podcast episode Secrets 160, How to Reach Your 2020 Vision for Your Brand. In that podcast episode, I talk about how to set a vision for your brand, how to set your goals. KPIs are ideal for this because they help set up the guardrails so that you stay on track so that you can reach your goals. Secrets 160, How to Reach Your 2020 Vision for Your Brand. Next, listen to Secrets 174, How to Future-Proof Your Brand in Uncertain Times. This episode is actually the recording from one of the free weekly webinars that I did in cooperation with Whole Foods Magazine. You'll want to check out this as well as the recording of the webinar. And the webinar actually included a lot of the different illustrations that you're not going to get on the podcast episode. But the point here is this. We talk about collaborating strategies with retailers. And in that episode, we talk about how to use strategies like scorecards and KPIs to keep you on track and how to ensure a flawless execution at shelf, which is what every retailer wants. Secrets 174, how to future-proof your brand in uncertain times. Then I recommend you listen to Secrets 177, how to plan and forecast sales in uncertain times. Predicting sales is both an art and a science. Balancing between excess inventory and out-of-stocks can be a struggle in ordinary times for any brand. Simple mistakes can be extremely costly. Learn creative strategies and trade marketing essentials. KPIs can help simplify planning and forecasting by making things more predictable. Secrets 177, how to plan and forecast sales in uncertain times. And then listen to Secrets 218, Retail Horror Stories, how to avoid problems that derail brands. All brands struggle and go through growing pains, even establish big brands. Hear about real-life brand marketing execution failures. Learn how to avoid the pitfalls and dangers to give your brand a significant sustainable competitive advantage. Secrets 218, Retail Horror Stories, how to avoid problems that derail your brand. Tip of the day, KPIs act as a guardrail. They keep everyone on track. They help ensure flawless retail execution. I record the video which has illustrations and additional information that I can't share in an audio podcast. You can watch a company video on the podcast webpage and you can get there by going to retailsolve.com slash session 252. In tomorrow's show, we'll talk about master storytelling, the power of a unified voice. This episode will build on today's conversation. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next show.